Life Audio. You are listening to Hope for Women with Father Wounds, Episode 32. For Women with Father Wounds. I am your host, Kia Stevens. This podcast is for women who have experienced pain in their father-daughter relationship as a result of divorce, abandonment, abuse, incarceration, addiction, or a physically present but emotionally absent father. The aim of this podcast is to help you exchange your father wounds for the love of God the Father. If you are benefiting from this podcast and think it might help another woman, I encourage you to share it with a friend, rate, and comment and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Let's dive in. Surgeons keep our hearts beating. They do the amazing, help save lives, and so can you. Your CSL Plasma donation can help create 24 critical life-saving medicines that can give Grandpa the chance for his heart to swell when he meets his new grandson or give a bride the chance for her heart to skip a beat on her wedding day. Every plasma donation helps more than you know. Do the amazing. Help save lives. Donate today at your local CSL Plasma Center and be rewarded for your generosity. Hey, Dr. Bill Sidyard here with Gospel Rant podcast. I love children's Christmas pageants. I really do. But honestly, they're trying to tell a huge story on a very tiny stage. And with all of the anxieties and insecurities in the world today, we need to see the birth of Jesus on a very big, fresh stage. And that's what we're going to do for six podcasts beginning Saturday, November 19th and going through Christmas Eve. We will take a provocative new look at Herod, the Magi, Mary, among others. Lots of fun. Remember, Gospel Rant on lifeaudio.com. Have a great Christmas. Take heart, child of God. Hello, friends. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Lunch Break with Kia Stevens. That's me, and I go live every Wednesday and drop a little encouragement in your life. I do want to remind you, if you have not hit the red subscribe button, go ahead and do that. And we're going to get started today. I am talking about father wounds. This is an episode specifically for women with father wounds, and I'm excited and honored and humbled to share on this topic. Many of you who follow me know that this is how my journey got started, my internet journey, (laughs) because when I started, I didn't have any social media. I didn't have any, any, anything, but I believe that God was calling me to talk about this subject matter of women with father wounds. And so I jumped out into the world wide web in about in 2015 and, and began talking about this subject. And one thing led to another and here I am. But I believe for some time that that God was wanting me to pin my story and to encourage women who were like me. And so that's how I got here. So I'm going to offer you some nuggets, some encouragement, share a little bit about myself today. And I hope that it will be a blessing to you if you're watching and you have father wounds or you know somebody who has father wounds. Share this video with them in hopes that it might offer them encouragement. So let's go ahead and pray. God, thank you so much for the the World Wide Web, it gives us the opportunity to do a lot of things, to share content with people that are in different parts of the world. Lord, I pray that this video would reach women that have been wounded by their fathers, women maybe that never met their fathers, women that had alcoholic or abusive fathers, women that maybe don't have severe wounds, but they have been impacted by something their father said or did. God, I pray that you would use this video to encourage them. And Holy Spirit, I invite you into this time. We need you, God. We need your words. We need your encouragement, your hope, because that is substantive and it will last and it will penetrate the deep wounds that women may have experienced by way of their fathers. We honor you and bless you in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. Welcome to the ladies that are 
joining me live. Hi, ladies. And then those that will join via the replay. I want to share with you all that I do have a book coming out March the 7th, 2023, Overcoming Father Wounds, Exchanging Your Pain for God's Perfect Love. But I want to give you a disclaimer and just say that does not mean that I don't still weep about this subject. That does not mean that there are not times where I cry. I cried last week. (laughs) I cried this week about some issues pertaining to father wounds. So I just want to say that for you, but I don't cry as one without hope. So let me say that. But this week I was talking with a friend over breakfast and I was saying something like, oh, maybe I do X, Y, Z because my father wasn't there growing up. And if he had have been there, then I would not do X, Y, Z. And my friend, you know who you are if you're watching, my friend said, stop it. Do not ever say that again. And I'm looking like, well, what you talk about? Willis? No, not really. But I was, you know, taken aback because she she came so strong when she stopped me and basically was like, you know, don't ever say that you would have been different had your father been there because my father was there and I'm still trying to get over having him there. And when she said that, I was like, whoa, you know, mind blown type of thing. Because it was kind of a revelation for me in the sense that I've been saying, I wish that my dad had been there to protect me from boom, 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 you know, long list of things growing up because little girls, well, that's the role of the father to protect and to provide. And so I have fantasized over what it would have been like if he had been there to do that. And when she said that, I was thinking, you know what? Maybe my biological father was not there in the way that I wanted him to be. But it could have been that God was protecting me in that regard. Because I'm not confident that had he have been who I wanted him to be in terms of being present, if that would have been the best outcome for me. I'm not sure if I would even be doing this this YouTube live had it have been the way I think I wanted, you know, I wanted. And that maybe God was protecting me, not God. God, my heavenly father was stepping in and providing protection for me by not allowing him to be there. I don't know. But in that moment, it reframed my experience for me in a very powerful way. I realized that, you know, God was in my life. He's been in my life. Even in that young age as I was growing up and I really didn't think he was there, he was there. So I'm saying that to say, and some of you may be saying, well, my dad was there and it was a nightmare or, you know, where was God when that happened? I'm saying this to say about uh, opening with my own personal story to say that it's possible that when we reframe our experience, we might be able to see God's presence, God's imprint, God's power, God's intervention. I don't know what your story is. I don't know how hard it was. I don't know what you have suffered, what pain you have experienced. So I'm saying it really, really lightly that it is possible that when we reframe it, we can see God's hand. Okay. The other thing that I want to share with you all is some practical steps that you can take to overcome. In saying that we overcome, just acknowledging that does not mean that we will never grieve over the situation again, that it will not bring us to our knees. It does not mean that because I still grieve and I still go to my knees. Okay. All right. So a few more things and then I'm going to dive into some more content, but I am pulling a lot of what I'm sharing with you from a blog post that I wrote years ago. And I've written a ton 
of blog posts on this subject, specifically around Father's Day. That's when you're going to see me come out and be like, you know, I'm going to write a lot of content about it. But anyways, I will put the link to that resource in the description section of this video. And I will also link a father wound quiz. I just made this quiz and it talks about three types of father wounds, although there are many. I'm specifically highlighting three types. And if you are interested in taking that quiz and identifying which father wound you have, which type of father wound you have, that link will be in the description section of this video for you to take a look. It's only 10 questions, so that's not too many. And it's got pictures. Okay. All right. So the first thing we need to do if we have father wounds is just admit that we have an ache. And that seems so simple, but I have encountered so many people that have said, you know, oh, my father wasn't there, but it's not a big deal. I've said it. I said that my father wounds are not impacting me or my father not being there is not impacting me or the divorce, the rejection, the other woman, the alcohol, the drug addiction, the death. I wasn't impacted by it. I just behave like this because I behave like this. Hey, Dr. Bill Sinyard here with the Gospel Rant. You know, there's lots of Bible studies out there, but only one rant. Our passion is to help frustrated, beat-up Christians hear the music again. Maybe you? Come join us. The Gospel Rant. We cannot be healed if we don't admit that there's an issue. And this is what it says in John 8. And 32, it says, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. But if we don't acknowledge truth, we can't acknowledge that we're in bondage, that there's anything that we need to be freed from. So the first step, we got to take an honest inventory at our lives and at our behaviors and at our habits and our hangups and say, you know what? Wait a minute. Why do I do that? What is the root cause of this behavior? And there are tons of books and podcasts and everything else that are resources that we can use to unpack whether or not we have a father wound, we have an ache, okay? Then we need to give ourselves permission to grieve whatever it is that we did not experience. And grief, I think I told y'all about the book that I'm reading, Healing Healing the Child Within. And in that book, Dr. Charles Whitfield, he talks about grief and how we want to say that grief is linear, that it's a straight line. But grief is not a straight line. It's more cyclical in nature. I kind of call mine the spider web. (laughs) <laughs> that it zigzags across here, that it goes across there. And, you know, it's like grief is like that. And in saying that there's so many different stages of grief, there's anger, there might even be rage, there's deep sorrow, there's denial, there's doubt. You know, there's so many different stages. And so when you identify and recognize, I have some issues with my father. I am not okay with fill in the blank. We have to give ourselves the space and the time. And the other thing that is mentioned in that book, and I shared it on another live, I don't remember which one it was, but to the degree that we have been impacted by that specific wound, to that degree that there's a correlation between the degree of the wound and the amount of time it will take to heal. So if it's a deep wound, it could take a year, two years, three years. If it's a minor wound, then it might take a smaller amount of time. But we have to be willing, if we desire to heal and to overcome, to give ourselves the amount of time that is due the severity of the wound. Okay? All right. Okay. And this is... 
the scripture that I have for giving ourselves permission to grieve the wound or what we didn't experience. It's Matthew 5 and 4. I love this scripture. It says, blessed are they, those that mourn, for they will be comforted. It's a promise sandwiched right here in scripture that says, if you mourn, if you grieve, you will not grieve alone and without any hope, but I'm promising you, you're going to be comforted. That should be an encouragement to you if you are looking at your life and saying, there are some things that I need to grieve. Sis, the word of God says, you will be comforted. And we know that the Holy Spirit is known as the comforter. So much comfort that when Christ Jesus was preparing to ascend into heaven, he said, look, I'm going to leave you with a comforter. What a great comfort to the disciples and to all the followers of Jesus that were going to be missing his presence, his tangible presence there on the earth to know this. We're not going to be left alone. We're given a comforter. And that same comforter has been given to us, the Holy Spirit, those of us who believe in Christ Jesus. OK, number three, I didn't have any numbers in my title, but I know how I am. I got list upon list upon list. Anyways identify the lies that we told ourselves in the process. And lies are funny, honey. Lies are funny, honey. You know, lies are not easily detectable. They're not easily recognized. We can function and live and do all the things and not know that we are being governed by a lie. So I took the liberty of writing down some of the lies that we might be tempted to believe and believe and not even know that it's driving our behavior. Okay, exhibit A, I am not love. Now we may not say I am not love because that doesn't sound good to say out loud. We may not willingly admit I am believing the lie of I am not love, but when we look at our behavior, it may indicate that we have a root belief of I am not love. Look at our behavior in relationship with other people, not just in relationship with the opposite sex, although that is a real good indicator, moment of silence, but our relationship with other people, with people that hurt us over and over again, with thoughts that we think when no one is privy to those thoughts, it may indicate that we are believing the lie of I am not love. Here's some more lies. Here's some more lies that we might potentially believe. I am not wanted. Okay. Again, we may not say I am not wanted, but we may act like we are not wanted. I am not beautiful. Oh my goodness. Y'all. I have believed that lie, honey, honey, honey. I believe that lie so much, especially in middle school. Middle school should be eliminated from life. Anyways, I have believed that lie. I have believed that lie in people that I dated and in ways that I looked at myself in the mirror and thoughts that I thought about myself. I believed it. I believed it. And some of those lies eked into adulthood. And I brought it right on into marriage, right on into my 30s, right on into my 40s. I'm 40. I'm in my 40s right now. You know, so they can eke in these lies and govern our behavior. We don't even know. We don't even know. Okay. I am not secure. I am not secure. I am not safe. I am not liked. I am not fill in the blank. Okay. Lies, lies that we believe. Okay, and then this is another one, y'all. I am always going to be, okay? That is another lie that we could potentially believe. Now, once we have admitted that we got an issue, we got some father wounds, we have given ourselves some time to grieve, we have begun to identify lies that we told ourselves in the process We got to replace those lies. This is a therapy strategy, procedure, tool, sorry, cognitive behavioral therapy. Shout out to cognitive behavioral therapy. 
where you identify your thoughts and you replace it with truth. You ask yourself, is that true? Is that true? This thing that is undergirding my behavior. And if it's not true, you need to replace it with truth. Okay. And so believers, we go to the word of God because we believe that that is truth. Now, I want to talk about these lies. Okay. In, in connection to saying, where did that lie come from? How did that become a part of who I am? How did it get enmeshed in the fabric of my thinking, in my heart, in my soul, in my mind? I personally believe it came from a wound. You know, like if you get a wound, you get a scratch, you're going to have a scar. There's going to be evidence that something happened to you there. And I'm saying these lies are evidence of the wounds that were inflicted to us, the father wounds, okay? So I have attached a type of wound to every lie, that every lie statement that I just mentioned. There are a ton of these. There are a ton of these. I'm just giving you a few, okay? I am not loved, obviously, would be a love wound. Was there a place in your life where you expected to experience love from your father. And instead of experiencing love, you got the opposite of that. Or you got what felt like rejection, okay? I am not wanted is a rejection wound. Was there a place where your father did not accept you, did not embrace you, was not there for you, and it left the scar of rejection. And so then every single relationship in your life, you view through that lens of rejection, deeming yourself unwanted, okay? I am not beautiful. This is an affirmation wound. And there are tons of affirmation wound types. But this one specifically is relating to the beauty of a woman, the femininity of a woman, because the father should affirm the femininity of a woman. He should delight in his daughter. He should be the first interaction that she has with the male gender. He should dote on her. He should say, you look beautiful in that dress. Your hair is so pretty. You're so beautiful. Da, 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 da. Okay. If that does not happen, it is possible that the woman will develop an affirmation wound. She could be affirmation star. Going to every, I'm about to say Tom, Dick, and Harry, you know, trying to get this affirmation that she did not receive. Okay. That's an affirmation wound. All right. I am not secure. Obviously, that's a security wound because the father in the life of his daughter should provide confidence and courage. You can. You can do it. Go on. Be courageous. You know, that's the father's role. His stamina, his stature in the life of a daughter provides courage and confidence. If he's not there, that can breed insecurity. Ask me how I know. I am always going to be fill in the blank, not smart, not pretty, not enough, not blah, blah, blah. Okay. That's an identity wound. Okay. That's an identity wound where you don't know, or we don't know who we are because of the lie that we believed and no one stepped in or somebody did step in and tell us who we are that did not have the authority to do so. It could have been a child on the playground saying name calling, talking about your weight or talking about your IQ or talking about your nose. That was for me. I was picked on by my nose. I like my nose now, (laughs) but I didn't for many years. Okay. Because I was picked on about my nose. So that's identity and people should not, have the power to define us. God defines us, period, period. Period. That's why I'm just throwing a little slang for y'all. Okay, this is what I discovered in the word of God. 
Psalms 147 and 3. And I love this. I have been meditating on this. If you've heard a recent podcast that I've done, I've been talking about the scripture right here. Love this scripture. Psalms 147, 3. And it says, he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. You want to know the favorite part of my, of this scripture for me? It's the S, the S on wounds. Oh my goodness. Because for me, that S is saying God's not stopping at one single wound. If he identifies, okay, you got a security wound. I'm going to deal with that. The rest of them, you're on your own. Or if you have an identity wound, I'm going to deal with your identity wound. And the rest of them, you know, go see a psychiatrist, go get a psychotherapist, go to church, you know, which we do go to church and God speaks to us through church. But what I'm saying is the Bible says he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. It's plural, y'all. It's plural. Thank you, Jesus. It's plural. Every single wound, if you identify 10 or 20 or 18 or 100, God says he binds up their wounds. All of them. And what does it mean to bind? It means to come and get the peroxide and the neosporin and the essential oils and all of that, to wrap it tightly, to check it daily. And to keep binding it up until it heals, until the scab heals over and new skin forms and it's not a wound anymore. Amen. Y'all, let me read it one more time. Psalms 147 and 3, he heals the broken hearted. Where are you broken hearted? Where in your relationship with your father are you broken hearted? God heals your broken heart and he binds up every single wound that you could possibly have. Be encouraged, sis. Be encouraged, okay? Number five, number five. And I don't even have the time to really unpack number five in the way in which it needs to be unpacked because I can hear all of the objections coming to number five, coming for number five. OK, but I've talked about this a ton. So if you just look up Kia Stevens and forgiveness in Google, you should get a couple hits somewhere. OK, choose a lifestyle, lifestyle. That means it's ongoing. It's present progressive. It is not past of forgiveness. And why do I say lifestyle? Because if your father is still living there will probably be other offenses that come up, okay? So back to my book that I talk about so much, Healing the Child Within. Let me just say, it's, it's a secular book. I love that book, but it's a, it's a secular book. There ain't no scriptures in there. Y'all come to me for scriptures, but go to the book for some healing and then couple it couple with scriptures. Okay, anyways, what I'm saying is, okay, that book says, wait, I lost my train of thought. I'm, I'm totally having a mother moment right here. Choose a lifestyle of forgiveness. It's gone. <laughs> I don't remember what I was going to say. Anyways. Oh, yes, I remember. Y'all, I'm telling you, I'm either going through menopause or I'm not. Anyways, not that forgiveness is a part of menopause, but it might be. Anyways, what I was going to say is that he says when we are moving in the direction of healing, we are no longer grieving and forgiving the situations of our past, okay? We are grieving current situations. We are forgiving current situations. Now, let me tell you what this looks like, what this could possibly look like if you are going backwards instead of forward. But how do I know? Ask me how I know. It's not because I read. If we're going backwards, it's like a situation happens and now we're grieving what happened when we were 10, or 15, or 18, or 22, or 36. And then we're also grieving what happened in the present. We don't want to be there. We don't want to be there. We want to have processed everything that happened when we were 10, 15, 22, 36. That need to be over and done with. And then we're just grieving what is happening when we're 43. You may not be 43, but you understand what I'm saying. 
We don't want to be always going back and picking up. Oh, this happened to me. And such. such. if you are, look, wait a minute, let me say this. I stayed there for so I can't. I pitched a tent. I built a yurt. Look up a yurt on Google. You know, I stayed there. I built a home in that going back. And I still might be tempted to go back and might go back. But what Dr. Whitfield is saying is don't go back. Grieve that and move forward, move forward. And if you have to grieve and forgive in the present, grieve what's happening to you in the present. Okay. I'm working on it. Working on it. All right. Anyway, some of y'all are looking at me cross-eyed because you're like, I don't want to forgive my dad and he don't deserve it. And he, and you don't know what he did. I do not know what he did. I do not know what he did. And I am sincerely sorry. I am sincerely sorry for the pain that you experienced. Hear me, hear me. But we forgive not because it is what the other person deserves, right? Right? Because for those of us who name the name of Jesus Christ, we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. We have been forgiven and it is not, honey, what we deserve. Amen, saints. Amen. Amen. We do not deserve the lavish gift that has been given to us in terms of forgiveness of our sins. Okay. So we offer forgiveness to others because out of the forgiveness that has been given to us, but we also offer forgiveness to others because our bodies were not designed to hold on to unforgiveness for a lifetime or for any amount of time. That's why people get ulcers and they, you know, well, I'm not going to go into that because some people might say that's not true, but there are correlations between things that happen in our body and issues, emotional issues that we're having. Okay. I'm just going to leave it at that. Anyways, let me read the scripture. Oh my gosh, I'm over time. Ephesians 4 and 32 says, be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Okay, y'all, I didn't mean to go over like that. It's 1234. Anyways, this is the last thing that we do after we choose a lifestyle of forgiveness and that's ongoing. Six, embrace an abundant relationship with our heavenly father. And I love these scriptures. There's so many scriptures that he's put in the word of God for the fatherless. And I'm using fatherless as a broad term to encompass Father wounds, whether you know father wounds by way of divorce, abandonment, abuse, incarceration, drug addiction, or a premature death, or physically present, but an emotionally absent father. I'm using these terms, fatherless, daddyless, father wound, daddy wound. I'm using all those terms, okay? Anyways, look at the scripture, Psalms 2710. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. You are received by God wherever you have been abandoned or rejected or hurt. You are not forsaken. You are received by God. I love first Peter five and seven. that says, cast your anxiety on the Lord because he cares for you. Everything you are concerned about is a concern to God. If you have felt like nobody cares, God cares. God cares. Hear me. God cares about you. Okay. Romans 8 and 15. This is one of my favorites. The spirit you have received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, The spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship and by him we cry, Abba, Father. Wait, that's not the one I wanted to say. That wasn't it. It was John, John, 1 John 3 and 1. 1 John 3 and 1 that says, I can't remember, but it's, look, but I'm like, like, that's the way you had to say, but you can't remember. It says, how lavish, I can't think. I can't thank y'all, but it basically says that God has lavished upon us. Where's your Bible? Here it is. Hallelujah, my Bible. I'm going to read this for y'all, and then I'm going to get up out of here. Okay, first, John, I've had so many mommy moments today. Y'all pray for me. I'm getting old. Okay, 
1 John 3 and 1 says, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Thank you, God. You're a child of God. You're a child of God. When I was feeling rejected and abandoned by my father, I was a child of God. He was there. He was ready to step in and love me and care for me and bind up all my wounds and heal my broken heart. And y'all, he's ready to do the same for you. If you are watching this and you have not tasted the lavish love of God, you do not identify with God as your heavenly father. He is available. He is one prayer away. Ask me how I know. Okay. Ask me how I know. Y'all, I could go on forever, but I'm not (laughs) going to go on forever talking about this. Okay. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged. I'm going to put some additional resources in the description section of this video. And also, I am coming out with a book, March 7th, 2023, and I go in detail. I share things I've never shared on the Internet, as hard as that is to believe, because I've shared so much on the Internet. But I'm sharing some stuff in that book for you, all right, because I want you, I want us to overcome Let me pray for you. God, I thank you for every single woman watching this live today, God. I know that you know her intimately, God. I know that you are acquainted with every single tear that she has cried about this subject. Lord, I am asking that you would heal her broken heart. Things maybe she has never even uttered out of her mouth. I'm asking you to heal a broken heart where she was disappointed or rejected or abused or abandoned or forgotten by her earthly father. I'm asking you to go in and do heart surgery on her behalf. I am praying, Father, that you would bind up every wound, whether she has 10 or 20 or 30 or 100, God, whatever she identifies as a wound, I am asking you to supernaturally heal and bind up her wounds, God. I'm praying that she would experience the tangible love of God today, that she would know the lavishness of your love, God, that she would feel surrounded by your love, God, that she would have hope, that she would have encouragement, that she would know joy, God. And I ask that you would do it in Jesus's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Y'all, thank you for hanging those four of you that are still here. I never go over, but I did today. I hope you are encouraged. I hope this will stick with you as we approach Father's Day and that it'll be a blessing to you. And I hope to see you next week. Take care. Bye. You've been listening to the Hope for Women with Father Wounds podcast, episode 32, for women with father wounds. I hope this episode has been an encouragement to you, and I want you to know whether your dad is deceased, absent, divorced, unavailable, incarcerated, or you don't know who he is. Sis, there's hope for you. Hope to be healed. Hope to be secure. Hope to be free, completely free. Hope to be satisfied with the love of God. Yes, there is hope for women with father wounds. This was episode 32 of Hope for Women with Father Wounds. I am your host, Kia Stevens. If you're benefiting from this podcast and think it might help another woman, I encourage you to share it with a friend, rate, and comment, and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Be sure and check out the links associated with this podcast so you can access several free resources for you. Also, I'm excited to announce that I will be publishing my first book for Women with Father Wounds on March 7th, 2023. So be sure and subscribe to my blog at www.kiastevens.com so you won't miss any updates. Thanks for listening to this episode and I hope you will join me for episode 33, Unpacking Our Father Wounds. Hope for Women with Father Wounds is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. 
If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Surgeons keep our hearts beating. They do the amazing, help save lives, and so can you. Your CSL Plasma donation can help create 24 critical life-saving medicines that can give Grandpa the chance for his heart to swell when he meets his new grandson or give a bride the chance for her heart to skip a beat on her wedding day. Every plasma donation helps more than you know. Do the amazing. Help save lives. Donate today at your local CSL Plasma Center and be rewarded for your generosity.